Hi everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to join this webinar. My name is Ronki Madrakadumi. I'm a senior product manager at PayPal. And today I get to talk to you guys about serving leadership. So, as I said, I'm a senior PM at PayPal. As most of you know, PayPal is an, is an American uh, company that, service, that provides online payment system around the world where it's enabled, where you can transfer money electronically. This is in lieu of checks and money order. At PayPal, um, I help large enterprise merchants manage and grow their business. So for most of my career, I've worked in the fintech. I've helped to build B2B and B2C platforms. And like I said, I, uh, I'm happy to join you all today. Thank you for taking the time. I always like to start the presentation by telling you all about my PM superpower. Well, everyone, I thrive in finding opportunities beyond the side of others. What do I mean by that? It means that when I get a no and it looks like I can't launch my product or I can't build it, I take a step back and I try to figure out how else I can get my product to market. I highly recommend that if you don't have your PM superpower, please make sure you have one because this is because on those days when you're down, on those days when it looks like you just cannot achieve your goal, your PM superpower will get you through it. So this is mine. I I usually you know I normally share my favorite books with the with uh, with this um, webinars. This time around, I wanted to share my favorite podcast. As a product manager, and I've been doing this for several years, I have to tell you, I you never stop learning. I never stop learning, and I love to listen to other people's podcasts. So these are my favorite right now. Some of them are product podcasts, and some of them, like the one with Josie, it's about taking some time to do some affirmations, especially with the pandemic. I really needed that one. So these are my favorite podcasts. If you get a chance to listen to them, I highly recommend it. So I want today we're talking about servant leadership, but I wanted to start with this. Great product leaders build people and products. What do I mean by that? I mean, they build people because if you build people, then guess what? You're going to have, if you care about the people that you work with, your cross-functional teams, teams, your scrum teams, your partners, they're going to help you build the best, best in class products because you genuinely care about them. So leadership um, really matters, but you must build people and products. The other thing I wanted to share with you all is I see leadership as an endeavor and service. I see that uh, the way I see leadership, I see it as my team doesn't work for me. I work for them. So, to me, successful leaders, they work for their cross-functional teams, they empower them, they build them, they build them up, they care about their dreams, not only professionally, but personally, and they help them to flourish and accomplish those dreams. And that to me is what, and that to me matters a lot because it, will, it leads to an everlasting footprint. And that, by the way, everybody is really what makes me happy at the end of the day to see my team flourish and that they're doing well, not only professionally, but personally. So what is serving leadership? Let's talk about that. So first, I think we should actually talk about what traditional leadership is. So traditional leadership is a type of leadership where teams do their projects and we give them assistance and oversight, right? We give them the, the intention, the sense of purpose, right? But in traditional, in traditional leadership, product leaders basically are demonstrating the organization's role in the marketplace, right? Whereas in serving leadership, you're working for your team. So you are basically leading your team with empathy, gratitude, and motivation and vulnerability, right? Because you really, you just work for them. You care about them. It's about them. It's about helping them accomplish their dreams professionally and like I say, personally. So I love serving leadership, serving leadership. Uh, there's a bunch of leadership that I have personally practice. There's participative leadership, transformational leadership, but I always start, I lead with serving leadership. So today our takeaways, we're going to talk about being empathetic, being an attentive listener, being present and in the moment, motivating, and then of course, building up our communities and the importance of gratitude. So let's start with being empathetic. So I see it as creating a culture of care. So what do I mean by that? I know in my own scrum team, my own partners, I know everybody's name. I take time to understand what drives them. What do they do for fun, for instance, right? 
especially with the pandemic, like, do they like to go to concerts, right? Do they like to go for walks? Um, I care about the milestones in their lives. I know the names of their family members and children. My team knows I care about them. And studies have shown that if your team knows you care about them and their organization cares about them, they're going to turn around and care about you and what the goals and mission that you're trying to accomplish. The other thing is, because now I've proven I, I, my team knows I care about them, it also frees up innovation. It frees them up to look for innovative ways to build products so that we're not just building for today, we're also building for the future. Because they're, motiv because they're motivated, that also leads to increased employee engagement. They want to be there. They want to be at work. They want to help bring the product vision to fruition. This is why empathetic leadership really matters. Being able to put, I'm able to put myself in my partner's shoes, in my scrum team's shoes, and feel what they're feeling so that I can help them any way that I can. And because I care about them, they're innovated. And therefore, they want to be at work. It increases employee engagement. Very important empathetic leadership. The other thing is being an attentive listener. Whenever my team comes to me, I let them express their viewpoints. I let them vent whenever they need to. I don't see it as my role to step in and try to solve the problem for them. I just let them vent. And then what I do after they vent or tell me what the problem is, I then say, okay, how do we solve this? How do we work together to fix this? And then we share ideas. But I listen first. And when I say listen, I'm present. I'm writing notes. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm, I'm putting together a list of things that they've told me so that we can kind of work through it together. What this does is it develops a long-term connection because then my team knows, okay, when I go talk to Ronki, she's going to listen to me. She's going to help me come up with ideas to solve this problem. And they trust me, right? So it develops a long-term connection because they realize I'm going to be there listening. And what that does is it also instigates participation and teamwork. So because I listen to their point of view, because I listen to their concerns, not only have I developed a trusting relationship with them, but also it instigates participation and teamwork. As in, they want to be there, and they want to be in, in, they want to do workshops, they want to be on the team, they're engaged. And because they know I'm going to help them solve whatever problems they're facing, I'm going to remove obstacles from their path. Very important to be an attentive listener. And the other reason why I practice this a lot is because with the impact of the pandemic, we have so many distractions and it's easy to just get lost in those distractions. So I, do, I take the time to just be there and just listen, which then brings me to being present. So the science of human relationship dictates, right, that we all want to be seen. We all want to be heard and we all want to be validated. Right? So how do we do that? Well, by being present. I need to be present for my team. I need to have empathy. I need to be an attentive listener. When they're talking to me, I need to be focused on what they are discussing with me, not checking my phone, not, you know, muting them, and, and then asking them the same thing over and over again that they should repeat themselves. And then that also means that when we have discussions and meetings, I'm, I'm fully present. I'm engaged. I'm writing notes as to what we just discussed and how we can resolve any, any concerns that came up in the meeting. What this also does is because I'm present, it spurs the inventive thinking, right? They are thinking about how can we be innovative? How can we, you know, again, because I'm present, right? We're sharing ideas. It spurs their innovation and ingenuity as well. Very important. So being empathetic, attentive listener, and being present all are tied together. And to me, this is all part of that servant leadership of, be, of being present and being of service to my team. Then the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, motivation. I like to motivate my team. Again, with the impact of the pandemic, it's very easy to lose your motivation because you're, because we're spending so much time looking at Zoom, uh, on Zoom calls. We, you know, we're burnt out. So now I have time to look for ways to motivate my team. And the ways that I've been able to do that, again, part of that servant leadership is autonomy. I give them a lot of autonomy. What I mean by that is whenever we have a customer problem to solve, I don't, 
I don't hold them back from doing amazing research. I let them go figure out how we're going to solve the problem, not just for today or for tomorrow. And I let them go and dream big on how to solve that problem and bring it back and share it with the rest of the team. So that autonomy is always there. That sense of purpose is also something that I, I use to motivate my team. Why are we building this? Why does this matter? I always bring the customer problems into the room with them. I bring them into the room with the customers sometimes. I still do days in the lives. I do them virtually where we meet with customers so that you can kind of understand the customer problems and how we can help solve it. But that sense of purpose that I remind them of the core value of our organizations and how everything we're doing ties to that core value of our organization so that they can have, so once again, they have that autonomy, that freedom to go dream big and do research. How are we gonna solve problems? And of course, that sense of purpose. And then lastly, as a product manager, one of, my thing, one of the things I always say is this, I have to over communicate and it's important. Again, because of the impact of the pandemic, we're all distracted. So therefore, I must over communicate our mission and vision. I must over communicate our core values. It's important that I help tell the story over and over again, not just to my scrum team, but my cross functional partners so that they understand why we're building this. I always say product managers are like evangelists. You have to, you have to preach over and over and over again. What is your story? What are you trying to do? What is, what cause, what problems does it solve? And tie that customer value you that business value back to the core value of the organization. The other thing I like to mention, the other takeaway is building up our communities. Mentorship. Part of serving leadership, of course, being of service to everybody, being, and I think, like, as I, as I mentioned to you guys, I see leadership as an endeavor and service. So for mentorship, for instance, I volunteer for programs where young aspiring product managers are looking for mentors. I volunteer for those so that I can help shape the next generation of product leaders. So I recommend that, again, being of service, not outside my organization. I volunteer opportunities. If there are programs that are helping marginalized communities to get into product management, I volunteer for those as well. There's an inclusive program at the University of Washington. I volunteer for those. Again, outside my organization, but giving back because other people helped me. In order for me to be where I am today, there are people, there were product leaders in my life who paved the way for me. The other one is community ethos. So with community ethos, what I mean by that is I, am, I, I have a relationship with people in our community and we adopt some elementary schools. So during the holidays, for instance, we'll take all the kids' names, bring it back to our organizations, and all the kids will have different things that they want for Christmas. And everybody, and people in my organization will pick different names from the Christmas tree, and we'll go buy them toys, and we'll deliver them to the kids around the holidays. So we adopt, we adopt schools. I cannot tell you how important these programs are because we're helping to shape these kids' lives, and, and this is super important. Again, this is part of that servant leadership. And then I want to end with gratitude. I cannot explain how important this is in certain leadership. So for me, gratitude means I'm going to send a thank you note to team members for going above and beyond. It means in that thank you note, I'm going to handwrite it and I'm going to tell them how much I appreciate their help. Before COVID, I used to do this in the, in the middle of the pandemic. I don't see everybody. So what I do is I send an email in lieu of a handwritten note. I still celebrate the big and small milestones. Before COVID, I would bring donuts in and cupcakes. Now I can't do that, but I acknowledge those big and small milestones, whether through Slack, with gifts, or whether through email. And then rewards and recognition. I always recognize, and I, and, I, uh, and I send notes to the managers of my colleagues, and I talk about what they did and how it ties to the mission and vision of our organization and the values that they embody and how they've gone the extra mile to help bring our product vision to life. So rewards and recognition is super important. And then, of course, my customers. I'm customer obsessed. I have my, for me, it's a customer first approach in everything. So therefore, when our customers, when we do a day in the life virtually, 
well, when I just meet them to kind of talk to them to, kind of, uh, to look at our wireframes or, or, some, or whatever, or even to pilot a program with us, I always thank my customers by sending them thank you notes so that they know that I value their time and I value them. So servant leadership is what is one of my favorite leadership styles. As I mentioned, not only do I practice servant leadership, transformational leadership, participative leadership. So our takeaway from today, from sermon leadership is in order to practice it, you must be empathetic. You need to be an attentive listener to your team. You need to be present and you must be able to motivate your team. And most importantly, extend that sermon leadership outside your organization and build up your communities. And of course, extend gratitude. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this webinar. And I just wanna leave you guys with one final note. Please have your PM superpower. If you don't have one, create one. Cause you need it. Because that's how we're going to build products, not just for today, but for the future. Our PM superpower is what helps us to do that. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. Thank you, Product School. And thank you so much. This is how you can reach me.